It is a great forest kingdom unparalleled in its beauty. It would first be inhabited in the ancient days of Middle Earth before the sun and moon. While it would become synonymous with its later lord and lady, the realm would have a long history containing both war and expansion. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the history of Lothlorien. The land that would come to be known as Lothlorien, or simply Lorien, is first settled by a group of Teleri Elves. These elves break off from the larger group of elves making the great journey to Valinor around the Year of the Trees 1115. While the Vanyar and Noldor are led by Orome across the Hithyglir, later known as the Misty Mountains, some of the Teleri opt to travel south along the Great River. These elves come to be known as the Nandor and would include the two groups known as the Sylvan Elves and the Green Elves. Now the Elven groups can be a bit much to keep straight. So after this video, check out my Clans of the Elves video for a full explanation of every group. While the Green Elves make their way as far as Osiriand, others would remain much closer to where they are sundered from the Elves taking the Great Journey. It is believed that while initially, these Sylvan Elves were scattered across smaller settlements in places around the Vales and Mouths of Anduin, as well as Eriador, the rise of the Longbeards in Khazad-dûm led these Nandor to relocate. Thus, the Sylvan Elves would primarily be found in the forest of Greenwood the Great and a smaller forest known in the Sylvan tongue as Lorinand, the Valley of Gold, also known as Lorelindorinan, the Valley of Singing Gold. After the destruction of Beleriand at the end of the First Age, most of the Noldorin and Sindarin Elves retreat to Linden. Despite being invited by the Valar to go to Amman, many refuse and opt to stay in Middle-earth. Among these are more famous elves such as Galadriel, Celeborn, Gilgalad, Elrond, and Celebrimbor, but another such elf is Amdir, who, like Celeborn, is one of the Sindar. He and his son Amroth traveled to Lorinand, and Amdir would eventually become the king of this group of Sylvan Elves. A similar situation would play out among the Nandor and Greenwood the Great as well. In 750 of the Second Age, Orofer and his son Thranduil would arrive in what would later be known as Mirkwood, where Orofer is taken by the Sylvan Elves as their lord and founds the Woodland Realm. While we see in both cases a Sindarin elf being taken as leader among Sylvan elves, it's important to note that these group of elves are less different than you might imagine. In the end, they are all of Teleri descent, and their different clan names are likely seen as less dramatic than that between Noldor, Teleri, and Vanyar. While Orofer and Amdir ruled over their Sylvan realms, another Sindarin elf and his Noldorin wife moved throughout Eriador before settling in Eregion and making contact with the elves of Lorinand. And while Celeborn would remain in Eregion until the war with Sauron, Galadriel and their daughter Celebrion would pass with others through Khazad-dûm, arriving in the forest on the eastern side of the mountain. Before Eregion falls to Sauron, Celebrimbor would send one of the three elven rings of power, which he had forged in secret, to Galadriel. From that moment on, Nenya, the Ring of Water would be in Galadriel's possession. When Elrond brings a force from Linden to aid the elves of Eregion, Prince Amroth leads a force from Lorinand through Khazad-dûm to aid as well. However, they and the dwarves assisting in the battle are driven back into Khazad-dûm in 1697, when Eregion is laid waste by Sauron's horde. After the arrival of the Numenorians in 1701, Sauron is defeated and driven out of Eriador, with only a bodyguard left of his massive army. Galadriel and Celebrion would take their leave of Amdir and go in search of Celeborn, his fate in the war unknown to them. They would reunite with him in the newly established Rivendell. Over the coming centuries, Sauron's power would grow and he would begin to move against the relatively new mannish realm of Gondor in the south. With the Dark Lord's power and influence growing, Elendil and Gilgalad form the last alliance of elves and men. In response, King Amdir gathers a force of his people to join the war. The elves of Lorinand are by this time known by a new name, 
the Galathrim, for they were not only comprised of Sylvan Elves, but also other Nandor, Noldor, and Sindar. Amdir, Amroth, and the Galathrim joined the forces of Elendil and Gilgalad, along with the Dwarves of Khazad-dûm and the Elves of the Woodland Realm under Orofer and Thranduil. In 3434 of the Second Age, the last alliance meets the forces of Mordor in the Battle of Daggerlad. Unfortunately, Orofer and his Sylvan Elves defy High King Gilgalad's command and charge the host of Mordor before being given any such order. As a result of this ill-advised charge, Orofer is killed in the onslaught, and Amdir and his troops are cut off from the main host. They are driven into the nearby marshland, and over the course of the months-long Battle of Daggerlad, half of the Galathrim are killed. Their bodies, along with those of the orcs and Amdir himself, would ever after lie in the dead marshes. Amroth survives the war that would end seven years later in 3441. He would take over his father's role as king, though he would grow tired of Middle-earth, wishing to go west and seek Valinor. When Moria is taken over by the Balrog in 1981 of the Third Age, many of the Galathrim flee south, and this event brings Amroth to make a great change as well. Now, one of the earliest inhabitants of Lorinand we know by name is the elf maid Nimrodel. We are told she lived there even before the arrival of Amdir and Amroth, and she did not care for the newcomers, for she believed they would bring the turmoils of Middle-earth to Lorinand itself. And indeed, she would lament their arrival, saying they had brought wars and destroyed peace. The only thing she saw as good in the entire ordeal was the Prince Amroth himself. While they loved one another, Nimrodel would not agree to marry Amroth. So for many long centuries, the king would not take a wife. After many debates, Nimrodel told Amroth she would marry him if he took her to a land of peace. They set out southward coming to Gondor in the very year the Balrog took Moria. For a time, they are separated as Amroth goes to the Havens alone, finding a few elves who wanted to sail west. Because of Amroth's love for Nimrodel, the elves agree to wait for her. They do so for a long while, until one night a storm begins to sweep them out to sea, and they are forced to sail. Amroth awakes at dawn, realizing he is now far from the shore, and dives into the sea, fighting against the waves to get back to his beloved. And there, by the Bay of Belfalas, the king is drowned. In honor of the last king of Lorien, the nearby Gondorian princedom and its city would be known ever after as Dal Emroth. Nimrodel would come to Ethelond, but she would not find Emroth, and what became of her, no tale tells. Caliborn would return with Galadriel to the land where she had dwelt for many years during the turmoil in Eriador. With Emroth and Nimrodel gone, Caliborn and Galadriel are taken as rulers of the realm. However, they do not use the titles of king and queen, but rather lord and lady. With Sauron defeated and his one ring lost, Galadriel is free to use her ring of power to keep the forest pure and alive. Unlike the nearby Mirkwood, Galadriel's ring allows her to keep the forest free of evil. Under the lord and lady, the Galathrim build the city and fortress of Karas Galathon in response to the growing threat of Dol Guldur. In this city, Galadriel plants Malorn seeds that were given to her by Gil-galad long ago when she lived in Linden, a land where they were unable to grow. But here, they thrive. So much so that the land comes to be known as Lothlorien, often shortened to Lorien, which means Golden Wood. The realm shares its name with both a person and a location in Valinor. The Vala Irmo, the master of visions and dreams, is more commonly known by the name Lorien. This is also the name of the gardens he and his wife Este keep in Valinor. The Gardens of Lorien is known as the most beautiful place not only in Valinor, but all of Arda. It is known for its silver willows, flowers, lakes, and singing nightingales. As for the Lorien of Middle-earth, with the power of Galadriel's ring, it is filled with light and beauty, and the trees do not die. 
Indeed, well over a thousand years pass, with no decay in the heart of elvendom on Earth. Galadriel and Celeborn would often be visited in Lorien by their family from Rivendell. Their daughter Celebrion, who had married Elrond and had three children, would visit her parents on occasion. Sadly, it was on one of these journeys in 2509 that she would be waylaid by orcs and given a poisoned wound. While rescued by her sons Elidan and Elrohir, and healed of her physical wounds by Elrond, she could not recover in mind nor spirit and sailed west the following year. In 2941, as Bilbo and the dwarves are on the quest of Erebor, the White Council resolves to attack Sauron's fortress of Dol Guldur. We know for certain that Galadriel was involved in the attack, and it's likely that Celeborn is a member of the Council and present for the assault as well. In days to come, the Lord and Lady would often be visited by Celebrion's daughter, Arwen. During one such visit in the summer of 2980, Arwen would meet Aragorn for the second time as the latter rests from long travels. They meet upon the hill of Karen Emroth, and there they pledge to marry one another. Aragorn would once again pass through Lothlorien in 3017, after capturing Gollum in the Dead Marshes. Just two years later, in 3019, Lothlorien would play its largest role yet in the battle against Sauron. The Border Wardens of the Realm discover the remaining eight members of the Fellowship of the Ring. The Elven soldiers lead the group blindfolded toward Karas Galathon. When the Fellowship had arrived at the river Nimrodel, named for the Elf Maid of Old, Legolas bathes his feet in the waters, which are believed to bring healing to the weary. It turns out the tale of Amroth and Nimrodel, and the stream which bore her name, was famous even to the elves of Mirkwood, for Legolas recites for the group a song. An elven maid there was of old, a shining star by day. Her mantle white was helmed with gold, her shoes of silver gray. A star was bound upon her brows, a light was on her hair, as sun upon the golden boughs, in Lorien the fair. Her hair was long, her limbs were white, and fair she was and free, and in the wind she went as light, as leaf of linden tree. Beside the falls of Nimrodel, by water clear and cool, her voice as falling silver fell into the shining pool. Where now she wanders none can tell, in sunlight or in shade, for lost of yore was Nimrodel, and in the mountains strayed. The elven ship in haven gray beneath the mountain lee, awaited her for many a day beside the roaring sea. A wind by night in northern lands arose and loud it cried, and drove the ship from elven strands across the streaming tide. When dawn came dim the land was lost, the mountains sinking gray, beyond the heaving waves that tossed their plumes of blinding spray. Amroth beheld the fading shore, now low beyond the swell and cursed the faithless ship that bore him far from Nimrodel. Of old he was an elven king, a lord of tree and glen, when golden were the boughs in spring, in fair Lothlorien. From helm to sea they saw him leap, as arrow from the string, and dive into the water deep, as mew upon the wing. The wind was in his flowing hair, the foam about him shone, afar they saw him strong and fair, go riding like a swan. But from the west has come no word, and on the hither shore no tidings elven folk have heard of Emroth evermore. The fellowship arrives at Karas Galathon on January 17th, and on that very day a band of orcs crosses the Nimrodel in pursuit. The Galathrim dispatch a regiment of elves, and the orcs are destroyed. The fellowship would spend a month in Lothlorien, though we see through the eyes of the hobbits that it does not seem nearly so long. Sam is bewildered to see the moon in the same phase as when they arrived, and Frodo recalls for certain three nights within the realm, and feels he can remember several more, but swears it could not have been an entire month. Legolas and Aragorn explain that time does not pass for mortals in Lorien as it does outside, said Aragorn. But so it is, Sam. In that land you lost your count. There time flowed swiftly by us, as for the elves. The old moon passed, and a new moon waxed and waned in the world outside, while we tarried there. And yestereve a new moon came again, 
Winter is nearly gone. Time flows on to a spring of little hope. As we know well, their days in Lothlorien are marked with grieving for Gandalf, the mirror of Galadriel and the revealing of her elven ring, and gifts from the Lord and Lady to the Fellowship. And on February 16, 3019, the Fellowship bids farewell to Lorien. But this would not be the end of the Galathrim involvement in the war, not by a long shot. For the very next day, Gwaihir bears a resurrected Gandalf to Lothlorien, where he is welcomed by Galadriel and Celeborn. There he is healed, clothed in white garments, and given a new staff before he sets off for Fangorn Forest. Just a few weeks later, the War of the Ring would come in full force to the Golden Wood itself. On March 11th, an army from Dol Guldur launches a full-scale assault upon Lorien. Between the might of the Wood Elves and Galadriel's Ring, they are repelled. Four days later, a second attack comes in coordination with an attack on Thranduil's realm in the north. Once again, the invaders are forced to retreat. One week later, the third and mightiest attack is launched on their realm from Dol Guldur. During this final attack, much destruction is caused on the wood's borders, but the orcs are routed once again by the Galathrim. It is said that the power of Galadriel's ring was too great to overcome, unless Sauron were to come there himself. Three days later, the ring is destroyed, and on March 28th, Lorien turns to the offensive. The army, led by Celeborn, storms Dol Guldur and takes control of the fortress. Galadriel then throws down its walls and lays bare its pits, cleansing the forest of Sauron's influence once and for all. On April 6th, Celeborn and Thranduil meet in Mirkwood and rename it Erin Las Galen, the Wood of Green Leaves. Thranduil takes the portion of the forest north of the mountains of Mirkwood to rule, while Celeborn takes the land south of the Narrows, which he names East Lorien. The central region they give to the Beornings and Woodmen. With Sauron defeated and the War of the North won, Elrond and Arwen come to Lorien on May 20th. Joined by Celeborn and Galadriel, they would make their way to Gondor, where Arwen would marry Aragorn and become queen. Two and a half years later, Galadriel would join Elrond, Gandalf, Bilbo, and Frodo in sailing west on the White Ship leaving Middle-earth forever on September 29, 3021. Celeborn remains in Lorien for a time, ruling the remaining Galathrim of both Lorien and East Lorien. However, without his lady, the Lord would grow weary and leave for Rivendell, which was at this time inhabited by his grandsons Elidan and Elrohir. Sometime after the year 61 of the Fourth Age, Celeborn would join Círdan the Shipwright on the last ship sailing to the Undying Lands. We are told that the wooded land of East Lorien is now populated by only a few wandering sylvan elves. The final mention we have of Lorien comes in the final days of the life of Arwen Undomiel. In 121 of the Fourth Age, after the death of Aragorn and bidding farewell to her children, the grief-filled Queen of Gondor returns to the forest of Lorien, which is now fully abandoned. She lays down upon Karen Amroth, the very hill where she and Aragorn were betrothed, and surrenders her life. And there is her green grave, until the world is changed, and all the days of her life are utterly forgotten. While the passing of the power of the rings would lead Lorien to fade, its beauty would be remembered not only by those who had seen it, but by the beauty it had passed on. For Galadriel's gift to Samwise Gamgee, had been a box of soil, also containing a single silver Malorn nut. Sam would plant this nut in the party field where the party tree had stood before it was destroyed by ruffians. It was the only Malorn tree in Middle-earth outside of Lorien, but it is said when it bloomed the very summer after it was planted, all the Shire became golden from the flowers. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom de Bombadil 19, Listen Me the Cinda, Celebrimbor, The Mighty Mim, Team Weasel, Rabbi Rob Thomas, Charles Leisure, Toby Mobs Music, CCDC Red Team, Nerd Sigman Anytimer, Pelkey Sports Cards, Mookie the Brown, Christopher Carbaugh, Joe Tepper, 
Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Berto Berg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Michael Wu, Grant McGregor, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.